Hello, my name is Sam Keen, and this is my channel, Explore Game Dev. In this video, we'll go through Godot drag and drop for control UI elements. This functionality is built into Godot, but when I know when I first started, I found the documentation a bit sparse. So hopefully the explanations and demos in this video will help folks out who are just getting started with drag and drop for UI elements in Godot. Here's an example of what we'll have at the end of this video, just a very straightforward UX uh, example that you might have in one of your games. Uh, the left column here is the source. These three items here are meant to be dragged over and dropped onto this target. So if we click and drag, we see there's a, a little UX effect going on to show that, yes, you have that item and you're dragging. Right here, the mouse icon is sort of the cancel, and that means if we do drop here, uh, nothing happens because it wasn't an appropriate target. But if we do drag all the way over to target, you'll see the mouse icon uh, be the open hand. And if we drop here, then we do see that, you know, visual effect is that one has been dragged from the left and dropped on the right target. And we can do that with the remaining items and they all pop over. Uh, in this specific example, once they're dragged here, they're they're home, so they're not uh, draggable from this target. We'll go through some explanation and then a couple demos. One very, very simple one, and then a demo of this actual example of how this is implemented. So just look at the time codes below if you'd like to skip ahead. As we mentioned earlier, drag and drop is built into UI control nodes for Godot. If you go to the documentation, it is referenced. Um, let's see here. We get into, yeah, here's some methods, force drag. Um, this is just searching on drag and drop. You get drag data. You go to some of these links. Um, there is a little bit of explanation about how these work, how they integrate, uh, a few little examples. But it's not super deep, so if you're brand new to this, it can be a little difficult to um, kind of figure things out of, okay, how do I build sort of an end-to-end -end example? So that's what we'll do in this video. So here's stage one, starting the drag. So this is when we click and start a drag motion over a control node, which has a script attached, which has implemented get drag data. The parameter here is position. We won't actually deal with that in this video. It's, it's not required to utilize that, uh, but just to know that that's the sort of the signature of this virtual method. Uh, this will return a data object of your choosing. So you will describe, you will determine within this uh, method what you want to return as data and that data object is what will be received on the drop data virtual method that we'll see here in a moment. Here we're in the sort of intermediate phase of the three phases of drag and drop. We're, we're dragging the element uh, across the screen with the mouse. We're now we're over the top of a control node that has implemented can drop data. We see the parameters for that. Again, that position we won't deal with in this video, but we do see that data um, object is here, allowing us to inspect that within this method. This method's pretty simple. It just returns true or false, and you would just inspect that data element, determine is this an appropriate element to be dropped on this control node. That's done since you may be in a UX that has um, draggables, uh, multiple sets of those that can be dropped on differing targets. So this gives you a chance to say, yes, that's the type of data element that I can process. If that's the case, you return true. If it's not, you return false. And this is where you will see, if you return true, you'll see that mouse pointer turn to open hand, signifying to the user that this is a, a valid drop location. Here we're in the final phase of that drag and drop operation, the drop operation, of course. With the mouse, we're over the top of a control node with drop data implemented. We've released the mouse button. That will trigger this method. So again, we've seen the position element we're not gonna talk about in this video, but data is uh, that important piece. And that's that object which was um, returned as a part of get drag data in that phase one. In this place, we we accept the state element, and then we make all the UI changes that would be required to accept this uh, drop target. So you would probably see the element disappear from the source sort of container in the controls and then appear in the, the drop container for the controls. Uh, beyond that, you would do any sort of uh, state management uh, for your application, which would signify, you know, 
typically association within the objects of your application. And we'll see an example of that as we drop into code next. Okay, so this is a very bare minimum example just to show these implemented methods in action uh, without much noise around it so you can get a sense of what's going on. Here's the scene, the source column on the left and the target column on the right. And we're meant to drag this red box from the left to the drop it onto the right here. That red box is just this color rect. It has a script attached. Here is that method get drag data, which is sort of the phase one we talked about that kicks off the drag and drop. It's it's fired off by Godot engine when you start a drag and drop that has on a control node that has this implemented. Here we just return self. So that data that we're going to return is just this the color rect itself. So it's going to be dragged across to the target container over here, which has this uh, script on that. And here's the other two methods we talked about. Can drop data was the one that returns the Boolean. So as we're dragging over a control node that has this method implemented, that's what tells us if we can drop or not. And you'll see again, if it returns true, you'll see that mouse icon change. A couple things happen here. If we look back to the draggable outside of get drag data. We also have ready implemented and here we're simply just adding it to a group called draggable. That's important if we go back here for that check of that the boolean we want to send. First we just make sure that data is a node object and if it is a node then we check if it's in that draggable group. So that's really all we're doing there and we return the result of that. So essentially if I'm draggable I return true. The other method to implement is drop data. And again, that's that's the third phase. The mouse button has been released over the container and that drops that original data element, which normally outside of this very minimal example, that's where you would do state changes on the UX and the, the domain model. But here we'll just do a print statement. So let's just see this in action quickly. If we run the game, uh, it appears here and we wanna watch down here. Let's just clear that. And as soon as we start to drag, we see that phase one method kickoff, get drag data. And that's returning the data element, which is the color rect itself. Over here, nothing's happening, but as soon as we hover over the target, we see that can drop data starts firing and it's returning true. If I release the mouse button, now drop data has run. So again, we see the three methods, sort of the life cycle of a drag and drop in action. Okay, so here's the just a little bit more involved example. Still pretty simple, but it's a little more realistic. And I think a lot of folks could use this as sort of a starting point for drag and drop. It has changed a couple things. Uh, from the onset, The we don't see again that sort of draggable represented here. It's been extracted into its own scene, but it's still just a color rect with a label. But here we're, we have a script attached and this is where we're implementing get drag data. So we return that data element and this is phase one. You know, this is what reacts to the click and drag. Similar, we are returning self or color rect, but we're also utilizing that method we referred to uh, set drag preview is another built-in Godot method. And all that does is attach to the mouse pointer a control that you want to represent the item that's being dragged. And I won't go into the details here, but again, all the source code will be in GitHub so you can comb through it. We're essentially just creating a little color rect, you know, making it a little bit transparent, giving it a tilt. You'll see that in action though soon. But the important part is we're returning self from this git drag data. If we come back to sort of the main sort of game board, the source container has a script attached to it. And here's where in the ready, we instantiate three draggables out of this dictionary here with, and these draggables have unique IDs and labels to them. We also, in this example, we need to connect sort of the source column and the target column. And this is one way to do this. There's, there's other ways to do it, but with that connection, we're using a signal so that when an item's dropped on the, the target table on the right, we fire off a signal that can be read by the source column. And that gives us the capability for the source column to manage its UI reaction to that element being dropped on the, the target. You know, typically it would remove its existence of the draggable in the source column. And then the target column is going to be representing that item in its 
column on the right. But beyond that, um, that's about all that's going on here. We're populating those draggables and we're reacting to that signal when the item is dropped on the target column. The target column here has a script attached. Again, this is the column on the right. And in that script, here's the other two virtual methods coming from Godot to, to utilize drag and drop. So we have the can drop data. We've seen this guy quite a bit. Here it's not changed, yeah, really at all from the other ones. We see if it's a node, the data element is a node. And if it's in that group, then we return true. Drop data, again, in previous example, we were just doing print statements, but here in addition, we again do that UI change. So we've received this rect uh, in the data element. You could, there is a way you could sort of move that literal element from the left and the right to this in the, the scene tree, but that can get tricky and there's quite a bit of coupling that goes on in that. These are simple elements, they're easy to recreate this color rect. So all we do is create a new color rect in code and then sort of just copy over the attributes of the one that came in as a data element. And we just add it to the rows in this target container. But then importantly, we emit that signal. And again, as we spoke to earlier, that gives the source column the chance to essentially queue free that node out of its column. So that's one way to do this. It, it works really well for these, these examples where it's easy to recreate that, that node here. So now that we've kind of go through that full life cycle, let's return quickly to the source container. Just look a little more closely to this signal we're connecting to where the, the node is dropped in the target. Here, we just do a check. And in this method, we receive the dropped item. And all we're doing is checking that this item is still contained in this uh, source column. And if it is, we are removing it and queue freeing it up. And that's about it. So again, we're able to just queue free it because we know on the target side, it's, it's recreated that node into its column. And again, that's just one way to do this using signals. I kind of like it though, it's nicely decoupled, but there are other ways you could sort of manipulate the tree uh, nodes uh, to also perform it. Okay, so let's just see this in action and go a little bigger here, clear the terminal out. So now, as we saw, we that git dag data is running. We see that um, attached to the mouse pointer, that preview. And then we see can drop data firing off. And if we drop, we see emit signal. But in this example versus the quite simple one before, we see that UX change where one has appeared in the target column and has disappeared in the source column. Again, that happened through that signaling mechanism we talked about. And we can do the same with two and three. They appear on the right and disappear on the left. And that is it for this example. I hope that was helpful. And again, all the source code is in GitHub. I know I went through it a little quickly, but I think you probably get the gist of it. And then you can sort of sort out the details going through that code in GitHub. Thank you. And if you did find this useful, I really appreciate a like for the video and subscription for future content uh, will help the algorithm and YouTube help me invest further in this channel. So that's a wrap for what I had today. Thank you for your time. I'll see you next time.